Okay, today we are doing a golf club build and I am pretty excited because these are actually my personal clubs that I'm gonna be working on today. We're gonna to be doing a reshaft. I'm gonna go through the entire process, start to finish. We're gonna show you all the little details, some tips, some tricks, so let's get started. Hi everyone, it's AJ, the mobile club maker. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy it, please like it, share it, or subscribe to the channel. Today, like I said, we are doing a golf club build. We are going to be reshafting my Mizuno MP18 MMC irons. Uh, pulling this current shaft out, putting in new shafts. I'm gonna go through the entire process, how you pull the old shafts, how you prep the heads, how you prep the shafts, measuring them out for length, for weight. We're gonna put them all together. This is gonna be a two day build. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, let's talk about what uh, pieces we're going to be putting together here. So for the heads, like I said, I've got my Mizuno MP18 MMC iron heads. I've had these for over a year now. I've really enjoyed them. So uh, we're just going to use these and put them into some different shafts. Um, the shaft I was currently using is this Nippon NS Pro 1150 shaft. I've enjoyed it. It's a good weight for me. It's got a good feel for me. but. I get restless, I get bored, I wanna try something new, so we're gonna go with something a little bit different. Uh, the shafts that I decided on are some KBS, KBS Tour shafts, which I've got right here. Let me show you what these look like. So these, grab these bad boys out. So these are some KBS Tour shafts, 120 gram weight. Hundred and twenty gram weight is usually my preferred weight for an iron shaft. As you can see, these are also in a black nickel finish, which I think is a, is a pretty slick looking uh, shaft. So we're going to be putting these into those iron heads. If you've also noticed, I went ahead and already took the grips off of my current irons. Uh, the grips are just some Lampkin Crossline black grips, but they were pretty new. So I went ahead and just removed those grips and we're gonna put them back on these new clubs um, after we've finished reshafting them. So if you want to see how I did that, how to remove the grips and save them, I will put a link to that video down in the comments so you can check that out if you've got some grips that you wanna try and save. Uh, so that's what we've got. We've got the Mizuno heads, we've got these KBS uh, Tour shafts, and we've got some Lampkin grips. So let's get started with the process. Okay, so the first step is going to be we need to pull these heads off. We're going to use a blowtorch, heat up the hosel, pull the shafts. You don't need a shaft puller or anything like that. You can just heat them up and twist them off because it's a steel shaft. Then we're going to go back with a little wire brush, get in the hosel, clean out any of the residue. I've also got a drill with a little sandpaper dowel on it, and we'll run that around in there too, just to get out any remaining bits of uh, old epoxy, stuff like that. Uh, remember to wear some shop gloves, because the heads can get hot, and uh, some safety goggles. And I'm also gonna go ahead and open the shop door when I do this, just because when you start heating these up, they let off some fumes and some smoke, and you really don't wanna be breathing that if you don't have to. So. Let's start.
Okay, so we went ahead, we've got the heads off the shafts. Just a little side note, um, I wasn't thinking really when I did this, when I went ahead and pulled all those grips off before I pulled the shafts, that was really a bad idea because when I went to pull the shafts, all of a sudden I did not have any sort of grip. I didn't have any torque to get the shaft and the head apart just doing it by hand. So I ended up having to put eh, three or four of the clubs into the shaft extractor to pull those shafts because I just didn't have the torque to be able to remove them manually. So make a mental note of that. If you're going to follow a similar process, you probably want to go ahead, pull the shafts first, and then if you're going to save the grips, take the grips off those removed shafts. Uh, otherwise, you're going to need to either have a shaft extractor or make sure you have an epoxy that breaks down at a lower temperature because the 24-hour epoxy that I had used previously was pretty, uh, pretty stuck in there. So next step, we're going to go ahead and measure all the head weights on all these irons. Just make sure they seem to be basically where they need to be and give us some idea of what kind of tip weighting we are gonna have to do uh, as we assemble them. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weigh out all the grips. Uh, just make sure they're basically pretty consistent within a gram or so. Again, just trying to get the weights balanced and where I want them to be. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep these shafts. Remember, we have to prep uh, both ends here. We have to prep the tip in that we have to sand it down a little bit to give the epoxy something good to hold onto. And then we're going to go ahead and measure these out with the matching heads, measure them out to the length we're gonna be playing them at. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go and do these basically a half inch over standard. So that's like a 38 and a half inch five iron and a half inch progression through the set. Um, so we'll go ahead measure them out with the heads, mark them, cut them, and we'll also prep these uh, tip sections also at the same time, sand them up, basically get everything ready to go so we can epoxy. All right, so we just went ahead, prepped the tips of the shafts just to get that finish off there, get it a little bit roughed up so the epoxy has something to bond to. We went ahead and cut them to length also. Uh, you might have noticed I put a little bit of tape when I was measuring before I cut on the end of these shafts, and that's simply because with the dark finish on these shafts, uh, you can't really see a marker when you try and draw a line on it like you would with a steel shaft, a regular steel shaft. So, went ahead, put a little piece of tape on it so I could then mark it with a pencil or a marker, whatever, but then I could see where I was supposed to cut. Um, so went ahead, cut these, we tapped them down, get any sort of leftover residual steel out of them, 
Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and dry fit them together and figure out our swing weight. Uh, basically, I don't have a real pure swing weight that I'm trying to get. Honestly, anywhere in that D0 to D5 range is where I wanna be. I'm more concerned with just making sure that they're all basically at that same weight. I don't care if it's a D1, I don't care if it's a D4 or five. I just wanna make sure that they are all sort of in that same range. So that's what I'm really gonna focus on. So we're gonna dry fit them together. When I do this, I go ahead, just put the head on the end of the shaft. Remember, it's not glued in so it can fall off if you start tilting it. But I put it like this on the head and then I'll get one of the grips. I've weighed all the grips and as you can see, they're basically all right around 50 grams. So I'm gonna get one of the 50 gram ones and I'm gonna attach it to the end of the shaft here, basically just with a rubber band and I'm gonna hang it off the end to simulate how the grip would actually sit on the club. I'll position the club in the swing weight scale also with it kind of sitting back from the very edge so that again, it's simulating how the grip would actually be on there. And I'm gonna just get a swing weight measurement on it. Once I get that swing weight measurement and once I get it dialed into where I want it, I'm gonna take the grip off altogether and just swing weight it without any grip sitting with the butt of the shaft up against the back and just measure that measurement. Then I can just measure all the rest of them that same way. I don't have to worry about the grip anymore. So I'm basically just using the grip the first go around to get a better idea of what the final swing weight's gonna be. After that, I can drop that down by taking the grip off and then just try and duplicate that number over and over again with all the other clubs. Okay, so we've measured them all out. We've got a basic swing weight where we like it. We know that uh, we had to tip weight a few of them to get them back in line with where we want them to be. And at this point, we're basically ready to put them together. Uh, last thing I like to do before I assemble the clubs is I get a little bit of acetone and some Q-tips. And I run the acetone around on the inside of the hosel. Basically just getting any last little bits of residue, oil, anything like that that might hurt the epoxy bond. Clean them up just like that. Then we can pick out some ferrules that match. Just wanting a ferrule that fits pretty close to perfectly flush with the uh, hosel, slightly bigger so we can turn that down at the end and make it look nice and finished. So we've got a couple different ferrules, one ferrule for all the irons and another ferrule for the uh, blade style wedge because it's a little bit thicker at the tip of the hosel there. So at this point we can go ahead, mix up some epoxy and glue them together. As far as mixing up the epoxy goes, it's a one to one ratio with this 24 hour epoxy I'm using. I'm gonna use a few little shaft beads just to sort of get a nice symmetrical fit. Uh, you wanna use those, they're about five to 10% per volume. You don't wanna to use too many of them. They're not meant to like plug giant holes. It's just meant to sort of keep everything even and level. Uh, so we'll mix that up and we'll go ahead. Remember when you're epoxying, because we've got these tip weights that you're gonna to want to put epoxy both on the hosel inside, on the shaft outside, and a little bit inside the shaft or on the uh, tip weight because you want it all basically to be held together. Uh, don't over epoxy. Again, less is more. You don't need to slather it in there. Just a very fine coat, just covering all the surfaces is more than enough. If you put your clubs together and giant oozing bubbles and drops of epoxy are coming out when you squeeze them together, that means you've probably used too much. So take it back a notch and uh, use a little bit less. Remember, you wanna always carry the club around by the head, don't carry it around by the shaft, obviously. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead, we'll glue these up and then wait 24 hours so we can come back turn the ferrules down, put the grips on, and they'll be ready to go.
All right, so it's day two. It's been 24 hours since we glued everything together. I've gone ahead and checked my epoxy cup that I leave with the clubs when I'm finished gluing them together. Felt it, feels good and hard, so we know the epoxy is bonded. We can now start working on these clubs again. Okay, so now we're just gonna have to turn down these ferrules a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and use the sandpaper shoe shine method. It's really the method I prefer. I can be a little more precise with it. It's also just a lot quieter and more peaceful when I do it that way. So we're gonna turn these ferrules down, then all that's left is gonna to be to put some grips on and these clubs are gonna be ready to go. I'm excited.
Okay, so we just finished putting the last grips on. Give it about 25 minutes or so until they're good and dry. We can go hit them. Also turned down the ferrules, got them looking nice and flush and shiny. So these clubs are all set. I have to say, I think these clubs came out looking really sweet. The dark grip, the dark shaft, dark ferrule, and then that brushed finish head. It's just a beautiful classic looking combination. Uh, these shafts also come with KBS shaft labels. I went ahead and didn't use them. I think it just looks better, just a cleaner look without any shaft labels. So let me know what you think down in the comments. So that's it, start to finish. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully maybe you picked up an extra tip or two you didn't know before. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, share it, or subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, leave them down below and I will answer them. Until next time, take care, thanks.